important, especially from the types of the practices of our trades. And so I decided to design um, a framework um, around your pen tester tools and a way to keep things um, consistent and uh, up to date across the board. And it's a really easy framework. Um, like I, I really uh, mirrored it kind of off of the Metasploit framework. Uh, so the syntax should be pretty similar to a lot of the folks that are used to it. Um, but I also <clears throat> kept more of the module um, framework around Metasploit as well. So to create modules um, inside of, of PTF or the pen testers framework is very easy to do. Um, it takes a little about, you know, three to five minutes, depending on the, the complexity of the tool. Metasploit took me like a friggin' week to, to figure out how to get that to work and, and automate that. But it works now um, in a great way. But uh, it's really just a way to keep all of your tools up to date, um, a framework to add your own tools. You know, I know that, uh, you know, when we do our pen test at Trusted Tech, <clears throat> we have our own custom tools, things that we actually use um, internally as well. So pointing those to our internal repositories and having those tools, uh, you know, continuously up to date from you know, the various different uh, folks that maintain those tools internally um, are really important. Oh, come on, man. I mean, I've slept like five minutes. I'll drink, I'll drink it. It's a, it's oh, it's warm, too. It's a present from Mick and Jamie. Oh. <clears throat> I'm going to sip it like a fine wine throughout my presentation, all right? Mm. It's so hot. It's local and hot, yeah. Payback's a bitch. <laughs> Getting iced at uh, a 10 a.m. talk when you slept 30 minutes isn't the coolest thing ever. But, but um, PTF is one of those things that I, I really um, I use all the time now, and the reason I use it it's because I like to use the, the tools that I write in. So whenever I go on a pen test, like usually I'll add like two more tools or four more tools. Like I remember, I remember when I started uh, PTF, there was like four or five tools in there. Now I think there's like 70 now or something like that. Um, and, and a lot of that's been uh, through contributions with the community. I'll show a little bit about that. But um, the community has really um, taken a hold of it too and submitted a ton of requests. Like I remember um, uh, Harmjoy uh, released a tool at DEF CON called Empire. Uh, I think it was at B-Sides. Uh, B-Sides or DEF CON, I can't remember which one. It's all blurry anyway, but no. Um, when they released that tool, literally within like 30 minutes of that talk being done, there's already a module for Empire in that. And with PTF, all you have to do is just run the tool and you automatically get that new tool. That's it. You know, so it's your new tools are automatically in there as you go and do it. I'll show you here an example. But in order to get to it, can everybody see the screen okay? So in order to get to, to it, you know, the first thing you do is um, just do a git clone and uh, just go to github.com. And if you just browse trusted sec, uh, get repositories, all the tools that I write are underneath there. Um, and then you just do PTF and it'll go and clone it. I'm on a slow connection here. That's pretty quick. And then as soon as you go into PTF, all you need to really do is, is launch uh, the PTF executable. And with PTF, um, every time you run it, it'll automatically um, update everything for you. So it'll update to the newest version of PTF. It'll grab all the new modules. And to make sure that you have all the latest and greatest um, repositories. So you don't ever have to do a git pull or git whatever anymore. It'll automatically go and do that for you. Um, so as soon as you run git pull or uh, PTF, it'll get to your um, current version. The current version right now is 1.2.2. And uh, you notice here it's got a similar um, type of feel to Metasploit. Um, you have kind of the um, prompt here. You can type help or whatever. Um, and it also does um, smart detection on operating systems. So if you're running Debian, for example, it knows to use um, Debian packages. I believe it supports a number. We, we support BSD, uh, Debian. Uh, I believe we support Red Hat now. Um, and then someone just did a pull for another one. I can't remember. It's hard to remember, but it's all in documentation. Um, it's weird because I write the tool and I forgot those. But um, <clears throat> also supports you know, 32 and 64-bit platforms. Um, so if there's two different types of tool sets, one that runs better on 64-bit, automatically pull those down. Um, but basically, it has a way of keeping all of your tools um, really in a central location, um, super easy to use. Notice here the total module count is uh, 68. And in order to uh, see modules, all you do is type show modules, very similar to uh, Metasploit. You can see here it has all of the tools listed. Now, it's a little compacted because of the screen resolution. Um, but you can see here that all the tools that are in there, I mean, we have the Social Engineer Toolkit, Metasploit, um, you know, JBoss Auto Own, Brute X, IKE Force, um, SMB Exec, uh, Malingo, um, all these different tools that you have available to you um, to actually go and use. And, and they're all broken down um, into the um, uh, pen tester uh, framework, P test, and pen tracing testing execution standard, sorry. Um, it's broken down into those type of categories. So, like, for example, if you're doing vulnerability analysis, the tools are broken down into that. And one of the things I missed, um, you know, growing up kind of with like Backtrack and prior to that, like IWAX and WAPIX and all those other ones is, there's always like a slash pen test directory, you know? <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever been in a pen test, but like you're having a really tough time breaking in. 
And so then you start going for like like the the the, the hail marys where you're like in the pen test track. I'm like, hey, I've never used this tool before. Maybe this will work. You know, or I've used this tool. Maybe this will work. You know, and it's like the hail marys that you're looking for when you're going and doing those assessments. But um, you know, a lot of times you're not familiar with the types of tools that are out there. Um, so it tries to put in a structure where you're like, oh, hey, I'm in my exploitation phase. Let's take a look at what tools are in there uh, and to kind of go through and see what types of tools are there. Um, go through those and use them. So it puts them down in those categories. And you can see here it actually install them in, you know, like slash pen test, slash reporting, slash Dratus framework, um, you know, slash wireless, slash aircrack NG. Um, you know, so it kind of goes through all those different ones. Now, if you just want to install one module, you can go to a module and say, okay, whatever. You know, like um, use modules, exploitation, uh, you know, SE toolkit. And um, this one right here, you know, you notice here it changes the where we're specifically at and showing that we're actually in the module slash exploitation slash um, SE toolkit directory. Now, once we're in there, you can just do show options. And it'll show you, um, you know, a little bit of the, of the actual module itself, the location of where it pulls information from. Currently, uh, the uh, PTF supports um, Git, SVN, um, file pools, um, a lot of different ways of just getting access to the most recent version of the tool. And again, um, you know, I, I maintain a lot of these, but also the community does as well. And I'll show you a little bit about the modules here in a little bit. But you can also, you know, set install type to different. You can set repository location to different. And it'll automatically, um, you know, house those. Um, but what you can also do um, is uh, in the config file, if I exit out of here, config ptf config you can actually change the base install um directory so it doesn't actually install under slash pen test you can put it under whatever you want to um logs that um, are saved in a specific directory and um one thing here is that ptf tries to um keep you up to date with, with everything and that includes like operating system updates like debian packages app get updates app get upgrades app get disk upgrades you know all those different um components so you um it automatically will update all of your uh um, your actual operating system for you too as well as your tools um, as long as you keep the auto update on, you can turn that off, and it'll um, it'll just do the regular tool installs. But if I go back to show modules. Um, if we want to go and install everything, we want all of our tools. All we need is this module slash install underscore update all. Now, the first time you run this, um, it's going to take a while because uh, there's a lot of tools out there and there's a lot of data you need to download to install. But it'll automatically install them, configure them for you, um, compile them, get all the dependencies, um, everything you need for those tools to run. Metasploit, again, is like one of the most complex ones out of all of them. Um, it'll build all of the, the gem bundles and everything else for you automatically. Um, and you'll have it um, there up to date. And what's great about that is Metasploit changes quite a bit. I mean, I don't know if you've seen uh, what's out there, but I mean, there's like get pulls and, and, and pushes happening all the time with Metasploit. Um, and one of the big issues that you had with more of the um, uh, platform specific uh, distributions is that, you know, you know, you get Metasploit and it'll be, you know, week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, you know, out of date. Um, which don't have a lot of those. So this actually goes and pulls um, from the most recent repos that you have in Metasploit or Set or whatever and automatically pulls those down um, and then packages those bundles again and then installs them. So it works out really well um, for having all those. But the first time you run this, when you use uh, module slash install underscore update all, it'll go through and install all those tools for you automatically. And then um, if you go and you run that again afterwards, it'll just go and update them. So, you know, just make sure that everything's up to date. So you manually um, update them whenever you want to. But it's just a matter of just typing this one command. I wish I had one of those clip mics. Oh, and I, I got tab completion too, which is awesome. So use modules um, slash install underscore update um, underscore all. And I'll hit yes. I'm just going to go through and, um, you know, basically do all of my updates for Ubuntu because I have auto updates set to on. So it's going to do an app get update, app get upgrade. Um, it's been a couple of days since I upgraded, so it may take a second. But once it goes through that, it's going to cycle through all the tools inside the list. Every single module, every single tool um, that there is out there. And it, it's not going to prompt you for anything. Um, it automatically goes through that. And um, again, we get module submissions like all the time for them. So I think we had like six last week. Um, so it's definitely um, building up. So if you have tool submissions that you want to, really easy to go and do. And I'll show you here in a second the, the module development. But it'll go through and cycle through all these. And I won't go through. I'll let it go in the background while I show you some other stuff. But um, pretty effective way of, of keeping your tools up to date. Now to create a module. Second here. Sorry. Oh. There we go. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> now, to update a module, 
The way modules work, actually, I think I'm here. I have a few different copies of it. Yeah, okay. Um, in, in order to update a module, um, literally all of them under the modules directory. So if you do cd slash modules, you'll see here all the different um, folder structures for the modules themselves. So if you're looking at per, um, getting a new tool, let's just say it's going to be um, a new exploitation tool. You know, easiest way to do it is go to exploitation here and take a look at all of the other uh, modules that are in there. And as soon as you add a new Python file into the directory, it'll automatically get added into PTF, run through, installed, and everything else. There's also really great documentation. That's one of the few things that, one of the things I always lack on is, is writing good documentation. So I wrote a pretty good um, set of how to create your own modules, what each flag does, um, you know, a whole description around it, you know, different flags that you can use. So there's also good tutorials on here. But one thing to show you is I'll just take an example of the SE Toolkit. And uh, first thing I do is um, define who the author of the module is. So it's easy for me to contact and kind of keep maintenance, plus give you credit for spending some time working on it. A little description of the tool. So this is going to install the Social Engineer Toolkit. Um, what type you want it to be. So um, get SVN or file. So if it's a SVN repository, it'll go and do an SVN checkout um, or an SVN update. If it's a Git repository, it'll do a Git clone and Git pull. Um, if it's a file, it'll actually um, go and use curl or wget um, to actually go and pull those files down. And then um, on tar them all that good stuff. Um, repository location. This is going to be the location of where you're going to actually go and download the file. Uh, Debian packages um, that are needed. Um, so if you look at this one, um, you know, Git, Build Essential, Python, PXBAT, Python um, Crypto, and Python OpenSSL. Um, those are all going to be you know module dependencies for the Social Engineer Toolkit. And one of the cool methods that I use um, is called after commands. And what after commands is is uh, a lot of times when you know, you install something, it requires things to happen afterwards, like a, you know, dot four slash configure, dot four, you know, make, make install, um, or, you know, untarring a file and then, you know, copying the directory structure or, you know, bundling Ruby gems or things like that. So what you can do is if you want to do um, after commands, um, what you can do is you can say like, you know, CD into the install location like that. And that'll actually CD you into the install location. They can do, okay, dot four slash configure, you know, make, make install. You know, so whatever you want to add to these, you know, as far as it'll do after it downloads it to actually go and install it, it'll go and run those. Um, so there's a few different features that you can do. Um, launcher is a good one. Um, launcher will be, once it actually installs, it creates its own launcher. So you can call whatever application you want to, not just from the pen test directory, uh, but anywhere you want to. So if I want an SE Toolkit, notice I'm in root. And if I just type SE Toolkit, it's going to go ahead and launch for me, move me into that directory, um, and automatically use it. And, you know, same thing for like MSF Console or whatever you want to use. Um, you know, you can launch it from anywhere you want to. So it really builds your whole uh, pen testing framework. Now there's a lot of different um, commands out there. Let me show you. Um, let me find a good one here. Like on the Metasploit, again, this one was a total... Anyways, um, you know, install Metasploit, you know, here's all of the um, required after commands in order to get to work. Um, and then after, the, you know, actually go and installed every single time so it's a lot of uh, work that you actually go through and then this creates all the launchers for um, like MSF Council, MSF bin scan, MSFD, MSFL scan um, so it actually goes through and creates those um, so it'll create the launchers for each one that you have in there. Now uh, there's a couple of uh, commands here let me just grab it real quick bypass so a lot of times um, like if you're using a um, uh, you know, like a file pull, uh, for example, um, you may want to say bypass update to um, to no, and it'll actually go and install the file each time. So it'll actually go and pull the the, the latest code repository because you can't really do version control um, on files themselves. And it'll go and pull it, check to see if they're the same, and if it is, you know, automatically go and install that update for you automatically. So kind of does a little bit of that. Um, you know, modules for Arch Linux. Um, you know, it supports a lot of different ways there. X eighty six locations if there's uh, 64-bit file types, um, all of those different ones work. Um, really kind of anything you want to use, um, you can kind of specify each and every one that's out there. Uh, but, I mean, it has a quite quite a bit of them. You can see here, I mean, you know, Golden Post Exploitation, you know, it goes to all the different modules that you have. I mean, Cred Crack, Egress Buster, John, Empire, um, Interpret over SSH, uh, Pivoter, PowerSploit, uh, PyCAC, which is a, a Kerberos Exploitation Framework, uh, Pass the Hash Toolkit, Unicorn, you know, going to Exploitation, you know, all your tools are in there and they're already, you know, working and everything else and they're tested. Um, so you have the ability to kind of run through all of those. And notice back here, um, it's still installing all of these, right? So notice there's some changes here to one of the tools. It's going and updating them. It's updating MPacket. It's updating Malingo. Um, op op you know, basically updating all the different ones out there. Pretty easy? Yeah. 
of course you have commands you can do like help and everything um you know all those different ones will definitely you know make it easy for you if you don't know understand the syntax or whatever but that's really the concept behind um, PTF and what I wanted to get out of it, a way to keep your tools modular, easy to use. Um, it's a work in progress. Um, you know, there are times where I, I learned that, you know, I'm, I, when I release a module, it breaks PTF. So I'm getting more granular on, on flexing, uh, uh, fixing those. But it's been a, it's one of those funny things when you, when you write it. I actually wrote PTF like a year and a half ago and I got it like 95% there. And then I totally forgot about it. And then I started working on other projects. And then someone's like, hey, you talked about PTF a while ago. Are you going to do something? I'm like, oh, I should probably release that. And then I went and released it. And then uh, the community has been awesome and kind of adding on to it, which has been great. Um, but I've been adding a lot more um, granularity of not breaking, you know, the tool itself, um, making sure that, you know, certain packages are installing right. It doesn't, you know, bork the rest of your um, packages or you know, it's a little different. Um, I'm trying to get more platform specific, um, a lot of them, and it's a little difficult. Um, so there's some talks around Docker and a few other things too to, to maybe help, uh, help use that. But um, you know, there's a lot of lot of work going into this, a lot of community support, and this is a it's a great framework um, that's out there for everybody. Any questions? Yeah. No, nope, so if a, if a repo um, area is unavailable, it'll just um, time out or it'll um, return a specific you know uh, flag that isn't um, you know like an update uh, function, like for like Git or SVN. Um, file gets a little bit different because like, sometimes what will happen is it'll, um, you know, like, let's just say they decide to move the package, which has happened before, and they move it to a different name. So, like, in, let's say they release a new version, like 1.0.5, and they release 1.0.6, and they put the friggin' version number there, and they remove the old one, right? Um, then, you know, a lot of times, you know, that, that won't be there. So it does check those and compares them to see whether or not they're actually legitimately updates. Um, it doesn't, you know, break the application if it's not available. Um, so it still allows you to continuously update even if that, and it just wouldn't update that specific tool at that time if it was unavailable. Yeah, it does. It does work with Kali. Um, the biggest challenge with Kali is that um, they don't follow the standard packaging of like Ubuntu or Debian. Um, so you know they have their own package names and everything else there. I've contemplated creating um, distributions for um, or packages for um, you know just them specifically to be able to call them up. But the same thing though, most of the dependencies for most of the tools out there are already in there. So yeah, it works. It actually works really well. You might get a package mismatch. Um, you know, like hey, you know, SQLite three is called something else different. You know, somewhere else, but they're already going to be installed, which is a good thing. Um, I've had it um, deployed on Kali before without a problem. I run it all the time, um, and it replaces all of the Kali launchers um, that are out there. So when you pull, you know, like Metis MSF Console, for example, it'll overwrite Kali's MSF Console launcher and then point you to the most recent version of Kali um, that you have out there. So it does work really well with Kali, um, but it also works, you know, with Ubuntu, Debian, uh, a lot of the other ones that are out there too. So you know, I'm trying to stay more in the the agnostic of the different platforms, um, you know, so, but it does work really well, Cali. Good question. Any other questions? Well, that was it. And that's all I had. Thank you very much.